Yo, what's good everybody? I am back again with another video and I wanted to show the big man some love in this video as this is one of the first breakdowns I am going to have for you guys about NBA 2K17. Now, I was able to go out on the community day and play the game early. So basically, I wanted to break down what I saw and how I felt about the game. And in this gameplay review on the big man, let's just say I loved it. Post moves looked better. The big man controls the paint more. It seemed like it was shading towards the big man, but in the end, it seemed more balanced because I haven't had a chance to explain the guard yet. And I will break those down next time. But right now we're gonna talk about the big man and the first thing I want to discuss is the new animations. There is no longer the ability to just run through the guy in the paint. So basically, if a guy is trying to back cut you all the time, they will get hit with the form right in the chest. And that's where strength matters in this game for the big man. So when you create your big man, you probably want to go with the strength direction because at the same time, on the offensive end, I was able to get deep post position due to the fact that I was stronger than my defender. And when you're up under the basket like that, the shots are a lot easier for certain players. I got to see Shaq up and close and personal. The guy was destroying me. NC Native, shout out to you. He had Shaq and we had no answer for him. But there are ways to counter that, but we'll discuss that later. But right now, let's discuss the moves like I was saying. There are 700. I repeat, 700 new animations for post bumps. Now guys, I love that. That means you can push the guy out of the paint. The guy tries to seal in the paint. You just can route him out with the right stick, push it. And if you're a stronger person as a defender, you can push the offensive player away from the basket so he can't get that deep post position. Now, I love that due to the fact that there's a lot of people that like to try to get right up under the goal and then they can catch the ball. It's not happening anymore. Also, I want to discuss some other things. Post offense. Now, there were times I was playing with a stronger player and there were times I was playing with a player that was a finesse player. Let's say, for instance, I was running with Anthony Davis the first game. It seemed like he was unguardable due to the fact that anytime he had a mismatch down low and if you got deep enough, he would just go up and do a stand contact dunk, which is something we have been begging for. The stand contact dunk is there where basically if you got a mouse in the house, you'll put him in the basket and dunk it. You just jump right over him. And also with that, we had guys that were stronger than AD that I was having to deal with. So basically what I did was the same controller concept is catch the ball, get the ISO on the high post, basically or near the elbow and I would do a face up and when you can do the face up he has a nice enough jumper that you can pull the jumper if they're playing off of you and if they are playing up tight on you what you could do was hit them with a quick jab step and go right by them as the defender is stronger but sometimes they were not as quick and AD could get to the rack and when you get to the rack I want to break this down the new shooting system it's all about filling the meter all the way up now and that happens on layups as well. So when I was getting bumped, I made sure to fill that meter up on the layups. If there's no one around you and you don't even get the meter all the way up, they don't blow the layup. I didn't have that problem. Maybe it happens, but even when I didn't get the meter on layups and there was no one around, they would make it. So you'll figure it out. It's just a simple concept. When the ball is released, you let it go. And when I was the defender, I was playing with Omer Oshik since I was running with the Pelicans and Anthony Davis. When someone was trying to attack the chest of Omar, Omer Oshik, what I would do was actually play off of him and use your, his length to contest a jump shot if needed. And when they drove on me, what I would do is put my hands up with the vertical. And when they went vertical, he couldn't do anything. So basically, if you go vertical with your taller defender who's stronger, it's not going to be that many made shots for your opponent. So basically, they're trying to teach you to play the right way with the verticality, the way Roy Hibbert used to play with the Pacers, going straight up, just making him have to shoot a difficult shot. So with that said, we talked about basically the finesse style, the physical style. You can hit him with the drop step with Shaq, like I was saying, just pound him down low, turn around and dunk on him. And then if that's the case, your opponent is going to have to double. So if they have to double, you're going to need shooters around 
And that's what the 95 Magic had on the game. Now, we're going to talk about rebounding. Rebounding was fun to me. There were guys like DeAndre Jordan, Omer Oshik, Tyson Chandler. You know those guys that really don't get their own buckets by on the offense. They get the garbage buckets. They would get tips. They would put them in. They would get basically putbacks. But also, they would tip it out to guys on the three-point line standing wide open. Because in basketball, you know your point guard and shooting guard are normally the guys that are back at half court so they don't get a fast break. And the game shows that. And when your teammates tip the ball out to you, say for instance, I had Zaza Pachulia with the Warriors. If he tipped it back out or Draymond decided to tip it back out, you had Steph wide open for a three-pointer and you just caught it in a rhythm and shot it. So those extra possessions that you saw all the time in the NBA, they're in the game with the tips now. And like, I was getting grabbed. I had two people like grabbing on to DeAndre Jordan one time and he still was able to just get an arm up and tip it out, which is what happens in real life. He's not, he knows he's not gonna get the rebound, but at the same time, he can go for the tip. So, with the putbacks, if you have no one around you, you can actually just go up and tip it in, one hand tip, dunk it. It's kind of easy. I actually like that because when you're down there by yourself, there's no reason to come back down with it. Just catch it and put it in at seven foot. Now, last but not least is the alley oops with the big men. When I was playing with DeAndre Jordan, I was testing out certain things with him. I tested certain things out with Anthony Davis. And it was a simple concept that I was gonna go with was, hey, let's see if the stand oop works. Now, when you penetrate and drive with your guards now, when the computer defender slides up to help, which you can change the setting, of course, not to help. When he helps and your man is just normally standing under the goal and you can't throw it to him because if you throw it to him, it's going to get deflected. Or if you throw it to him, he's really not going to do anything because it's going to take him 10 seconds to go up like it did in the past. You can just lob it up to him if he's standing right by the goal. It's not going to go 10 rows in the crowd. He will just go up and do a dunk or just a lay-in, which I loved. So the way CP3 used to feed DeAndre Jordan where he's just standing under the goal, the stand vert alley will be used in this game. I threw one from half court one time because I saw him up the court wide open and he was able to catch it and put it in. So that concept right there will be great because you don't have to bring the ball down. It's a quick bucket. I love that concept. So guys, you're gonna have physical play in the paint. You're gonna love the defense because if you can beat your man to the spot and play smart defense, rotate well, you'll do just fine. And you will monitor the paint with the big man because the big man can, can block shots. And when you can hit the L2 or LT, whatever the system you're playing on, and using the right stick, you can bump the defenders. You basically own that paint. So guys, I hope you enjoy this video on the big man. I cannot wait. Just remember the post moves did not change. They just fine tuned them a lot more. And last but not least, I will at least say I consider Sean Livingston a big man, so I'll go ahead and say that. I was able to catch it at 10 feet, hit his patented turnaround, and it was money. Just letting you know. So guys, stay tuned for guards up next, and we have plenty more to talk about. So I hope you enjoyed this video. See you.